Hey guys, what's up? Bisectatron here with the next CWL premiere video. This is the week six recap. Before I get into the action, I just want to say real quick two things. First, the poll and projections video will be back for week seven, uh, coming up in a few days. And also, uh, check out the description below for a hero upgrade guide done by a channel called Clash Clinic. I want to shout out awesome video, so check that out in the description if you want to know about upgrading your heroes, stuff like that. So anyway, week six, um, interesting matchups. Not all of these actually happened. There were some buys because some clans have dropped off. Let's take a look at the first little uh, cluster of results here, the first four. For starters, we have CZX Knights taking out Rogue 11. Good word of them, 85-83. Valor Doharis, King Jeffrey, uh, KJ with the victory. Four-star margin there, 83-79. Uh, Pigeonism dropped out, I believe. Uh, so Hindustan gets the buy there. They go up um, to, I believe, 5-1. And, and Finland War uh, loses to J off, 84-81. Let's start with that first result being uh, the X Knights getting the win 85-83 over Ro uh, Rogue 11. And really these are two clans that are both in the top half for sure. And that shows by them both currently being in second place in their divisions. CZX Knights was 2-3 and three going into it. Rogue 11 was 4-1. and one. And uh, I don't think the records quite do justice because CZX Knights has had a tough record. They had J off last week, two weeks ago, WHF2. They've been putting up good numbers, uh, now averaging 83.8 stars for Rogue 11, uh, averaging 83.5. So both very solid clans. CZX Knights gets the upper hand here. But I can see both these clans uh, being strong second place clans, if not first in their division. Okay, next war, King Jeffrey getting the win over Valor Doharis, 83-79. Um, for VD, not a huge difference. Their season's been kind of iffy. Uh, 81.3 average stars, four down to one in five after this loss. So struggling for sure um, in the minor division. King Jeffrey, on the other hand, despite being three and three, They are a very strong clan. Last week actually got 85 stars. The only reason they lost is because they went against Hindustan, who put up 86. They're in a tough division uh, with Rogue 11 and Hindustan, both uh, having some winning records being above them. But King Jeffrey, probably the best uh, three and three clan right now. And finally, as you guys saw, J off getting the upper hand over Finland War. Finland War has been tough. They won the first week, lost the last five. Jay Off, on the other hand, getting the second wind. They won the first two, then lost two, maybe a bit of a slump. Really only one of those weeks was kind of bad. The other was just a tough matchup. But the last two weeks, they've proven themselves to be a consistent top clan in their minor division, and they're at top uh, at four and two in that division. Moving right along, the next four, once again, we have a buy for Emphatic Fury because Quantum 3, as you guys heard last week, Um, decided to drop out because they couldn't reach a compromise with the administration of CWL. But in other news, we have Dragon Rejects 86 or 83 over Crystal Warrior, WHF2 over Grumpy Old Man 8379, and finally Quixotic Squad getting a nice victory there, 85 stars to the 83 of Pinoy Banditos 1. For Dragon Rejects, it's definitely nice to see them bounce back after a tough loss against WHF2 in that interdivisional matchup last week. So establishing themselves as a clan that can consistently win against the the lower half of the league, I guess you could say, um, four and two. They've had a relatively easy schedule besides the WHF war and I think maybe one other tough war. But um, they've shown that they're one of the top clans for sure at 4 and 2 now in the Wallbreaker division. It continues to be one of those seasons for Crystal Warrior. 0 and 6, um, not doing terrible. 81.8 average stars 4. Um, but the differential is what's killing them. They're averaging 84.5 stars against. If it's the base building, if it's being unlucky, I don't know. Probably the base building. Luck tends to not um, average out that nicely. So, uh, tough season for them, but. Uh, Dragon Rejects is definitely looking solid. Moving on to the next one, WHF2 versus Grumpy Old Men. WHF2 with the win, 87, or sorry, not 87, 83 to 79. 
Um, good word to them, putting them at five and one, a five week winning streak. They lost the first week, but been killing it ever since, averaging 83.7 per week, which is pretty solid in terms of stars. Four, Grumpy Old Men has been hit and miss. They've put up like an 80, I think, in week, uh, week three, then like a 84, then an 81. They're kind of bouncing back and forth, averaging out at exactly 82 stars per week, which will get you to about three and three as their record shows. So they're kind of hit and miss. They came out strong. We'll see if they can kind of make a run in the second half of their season, especially with Quantum 3 not being a uh, competitor anymore in the top clan, only being four and two at Pinoy Banditos. Speaking of Pinoy Banditos, they lost this week to Quixotic Squad, and this one's going to make it interesting now because Pinoy Banditos drops the 4-2, and two, still looking pretty good at the top of their division, putting up solid numbers each week uh, for the most part. But really, in the wall breaker division, Quixotic Squad's in last place technically at 3-3, three and three, which is really weird because they're averaging, uh, let's see, 83.3 stars, which is very solid, and they put up great numbers. They had one tough kind of weird loss, only got 79 against Emphatic Fury, but that division, all clans are between 3-3 three and three and 5-1. and one. It'll be interesting to see who can make a run at possibly dethroning WHF2 from the number one spot. Okay, coming at you guys with some more results. We are Spartans versus Terps win big. Pretty big surprise here. Terps win big, gets their first win. It wasn't a big win, but it was a win, and I think they'll take it 84-83. Forged from Steel takes out the undefeated Marshalls Nation uh, on percentage, tied 82-82. One Hive Genesis against Three Point Park. This was a weird war. We had to uh, make an adjustment, so the stars don't exactly uh, add up, as well as some other weird stuff happened. I'll talk about that in just a moment. And finally, Chosen Elite versus LT. LT gets the buy. I'm not sure what happened to Chosen Elite. Um, I'll check into it so you guys can know soon, but... For whatever reason, they are not uh, no longer in the Premier League. But how about that first upset? Terps win big with their first win here. If there was a poll, this would have busted pretty much everyone's predictions. Only averaging 81.5 stars for that's after this week, actually, so probably lower before. And um, really had not seen a whole lot of great wars, but uh, here they go with a with a win. Maybe they'll look to you know get back to a solid record before the season ends. Uh, so good job to them. We are Spartans has been consistent, but a tough loss. Uh, we'll see if they can bounce back. Still at four and two, still in good position in their division. Forged from Steel versus Marshall's Nation. Um, interesting war. Both uh, clans very solid. Marshall's Nation undefeated, but they do get their first loss. Kind of a weird uh, war because Marshall's Nation, uh, not terribly high scoring, neither is Forge from Steel, both averaging about 83, which is only kind of solid uh, in terms of stars four, but Marshall's Nation had a huge differential, like three point, almost four star differential average each week, whereas Forge from Steel only averaging 0 0.3 stars more than the stars against each week. But really, um, a surprise, Forge from Steel gets the win going up to five and one. Marshall's Nation now down to five and one tied with LT in their division. Should be an interesting division. Uh, looks like LT and Marshall's Nation are both going to duel it out for the top spot there, whereas Forge from Steel and We Are Spartans looks like they're going to duel it out for the top spot in the, uh, what is that, the Goblin Division. Okay, so to address the One Hive Genesis Three Point Park War, of course, Three Point Park, as you guys saw, getting the win 79-77. So, uh, you know, they get the win fair and square, but there were some interesting uh, complications in that war. To start, the matching got messed up. I believe that was our clan's fault. Um, a different leader uh, accepted the request than uh, had originally uh made the roster and all that stuff so we had a town hall 10 advantage to make it even they didn't at attack one of our top town hall 10 bases we didn't attack one of their bottom town hall 9 bases so three stars off the table for each clan but that pretty much evened it out so um everyone could still attack just couldn't attack uh certain bases specifically those uh bases one base on each side basically so the war was even i think both clans could agree on that the problem was one of our Town Hall 11s uh, could not attack. He got caught in, I believe, a wildfire situation, which of course was 
not good um, and that should be put over Clash yeah, for sure but it just kind of is unfortunate for our clan um, that he wasn't able to attack he's a Town Hall 11 so uh, no disrespect to Three Point Park but if he had been in the war I think we would have won um, fairly uh, confidently by maybe multiple stars even uh, because those two Town Hall 11 attacks are so precious in these wars where there's only four Town Hall 11s. So, uh, no disrespect to Three Point Park. Good war. Um, there were some great attacks. We had two 10v10 triples. They had some good stuff as well. But um, it sucks. We're down to 1-5. And, five. and uh, Three Point Park, on the other hand, that brings them up to 2-4. and four. So, we're going to look, uh, speaking for Genesis, we're going to look to bounce back and try to get a solid record uh, to end the season. So anyway, yeah, that'll cover it for these uh, four matchups because the last one was, of course, the bye. Um, but let's uh, wait for this attack to end, I guess. Typically don't finish early in these videos in terms of the matchups, but I guess I did here because we had two attacks to look at as we went through that cluster. So um, this one actually an attack by FYSB, uh, something thumbs, getting a nice witch three-star at Town Hall 9. Good stuff to him, and we'll await the clouds to take us into, or not the clouds, uh, just the end of the attack to take us into the next cluster here. Okay, Invictus Prime versus Dai Salbazis DS. Uh, very close war, both clans, huge performances, but Invictus Prime 86 85 gets the win. FYSB, uh, big. Pretty much a blowout, 7 stars, 85, 78 over Dark Looters X. And then we have Sons of Anarchy gets the win over Art of War, 81 to 75, which is pretty low, surprisingly. I'm not sure what happened there. Um, maybe just a slump there for Art of War. And then finally, Dark Avengers, 86, 80 over Forta's LTU. Very strong performance from Dark Avengers. Some pretty big blowouts, actually, in this uh, little cluster here between these two divisions. But yeah, that was surprisingly close for that first matchup, Invictus Prime versus DS, 86-85, especially because DS put up 84 stars in Week 1, but since that only put up a the highest since Week 1 was 82 stars, mostly 80s, 81s for them. So I guess they knew what they had to do. They uh, they went for it. They almost got the, uh, the win, but lost by one star. Invictus Prime, of course, we know what they can do. The only remaining undefeated clan in CWL, and they have the numbers to show for it, averaging 84.8 stars, looking to continue to pull ahead, although FYSB right on their tail at 5-1. and one. The next war was a surprise for sure, though, especially um, in the margin more than who won. We knew it was going to be a good war, but I guess it actually wasn't a good war with uh, FYSB getting a 7-point margin, 85-78, uh, over Dark Looters X. DLX, um, weird situation, went so strong through those first four weeks, then had a very bad war against Marshall's Nation, came back strong, now they're down again, kind of getting hot and cold on us the last uh, three weeks. Whereas FYSB, the exact opposite, averaging 84 stars. They got 84 stars the first four weeks, then went down to 83, now up to 85. So um, getting that average back to 84, I guess, as they like it. Uh, up to 5-1, and one, looking good for them. Dark Leaders X, looking good if they can hold their lead at 4-2 and two in the Dragon Division. Next clan being Dark Avengers at 3-3. Three and three. The next one here was a huge surprise, though. Um, Sons of Anarchy gets their first win over Art of War. Sons of Anarchy um, only averaging 80 stars. I think that's one of the lowest in CWL Premier. 80 stars per war. Really didn't do much different. Got 81 this week, but for whatever reason, Art of War only got 75. Again, some of these might also be a situation where people couldn't attack. I know that happened with Genesis with our Town Hall 11, so I don't want to, you know, completely roll that out because that could happen to other clans as well, especially if it happened to us. So um, those are always possibilities in some of these wars, and not always do people put that kind of information in uh, the outlets I use to get my information for these matchups. So um, we don't know exactly what happened, but it might have just been a bad war for Art of War. And uh, for whatever reason, Sons of Anarchy, their first win to 1-5, and five, Art of War down to 2-4. and four. And finally for our last one here, Dark Avengers 86-80 over Fortes LTU going down to 0-6, uh, Dark Avengers to 3-3. Three and, three. and the Avengers, probably my kind of sleeper pick, 
They are 3-3, three three, but that so does not represent them, averaging 84.2 stars for DLX, just for reference, it's averaging 82.5, so they are almost two stars above per week on average. Uh, great job. I think they have a good shot at winning that division. Uh, Forte is unfortunately down to 0-6. Not looking too good. Um, anyway, here are the uh, overall standings. You can see Invictus Prime, 6-0, the only clan that can say they're undefeated in either division. And uh, everything else follows a uh, suit, you can see, through the rest of the conference. And then the Elixir Conference. Uh, pay close attention to the Wall Breaker division on the bottom. Bottom clan is only 3-3, three and three, top clan 5-1. and one. A lot of mobility there. We'll see if WHF2 can hold on throughout the second half of the season. But anyway, uh, stay tuned for the projections. Week 7 should be interesting, and uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, thank you guys for watching this video. I appreciate it, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bisectatron out.